Hello everyone and welcome back. Not slowing down with the Onslaught build, we have another great legend tier Onslaught build worth nibbling on. Briarbind with Buried Bloodline is a combo worth using if you ever run this in GMs with its huge survivability lockdown potential it offers straight away. However, in the Onslaught mode, if you want an easy way to lock down areas fairly well, then this build is key if you don't have a Void Hunter on your team for example. It has everything you would want from healing, debuffs, damage boost, AoE lockdown, continuous damage, devour on demand, fast grenade regen, survivability, divorce papers, etc. You name it, and this build has it. So let's go over why this is going to be a huge favourite with a number of players. For aspects, you're going to want to have Child of the Old Gods, where upon crafting Rift, you'll cast a Void Soul. A damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give you back grenade, melee, class ability, and a healthfully user. Then you want Chaos Accelerant where you can overcharge your grenades. Void Soul is a must for the build to work, so not much is required to cover here, but Chaos Accelerant is going to allow us to overcharge our grenades to do more damage over time, but also greatly benefiting from our fast grenade regen. A Fragments use, Echo Remnant where lingering grenade durations are increased, Echo Explosion where Void Ability Finder Blows cause targets to explode, Echo Undermining where your Void Grenades weaken targets, and Echo Persistence where Void Buffs applied to you are increased. Void Souls cannot be improved on further outside of the usage of Exotics and Echo Explosion effect. This alone means focus on grenade usage will increase by tenfold, and if you play your cards right, you can use your Vortex Grenades at a much higher rate. Using Vortex Grenades with Void Souls effect will allow players to maximise damage on grouped up enemies available, and then further combining this with undermining will overall provide an extra layer of debuff when Void Souls aren't available. The great thing about this kit is how freely available you can use Vortex Grenades and undermining fine, considering the negative benefits they both provide. The kit will fix these issues as you play, and honestly it's probably the best thing to run with. For the modern stats, recovery and discipline will need to be aimed for at a high level for the support of the build. However, do remember that Void Soul will grant extra bonuses towards these stats, so if you can't reach tier 10, then honestly don't worry about it too much. Recovery at tier 10 will provide users a 48 second cooldown upon use. This is an easy stat to reach at tier 10 without the need of mods as long as you invest in the high recovery stat armor. However, having bolstering detonation mod tends to be the only one mod I would recommend players to have and always keep when using any build that focuses on getting class ability back. We do have Absolution, which will grant a 5% for all abilities used, but overall you don't need a lot for this stat. Your Discipline will be at tier 8 for a 1 minute 38 second cooldown via Vortex Grenades. Although the stat cooldown is high, having Devour and Child with Old Gods in hand does allow us to reduce the cooldown rate of using Vortex Grenades more often. This is where the Undermining Fragment is finally used here, since we have a number of active ways to reduce the cooldown with its current level. Further, with Grenade Kickstart for a 34.4% bonus and the Bomber Mod for a 12% buff as well, all of these in the hand should allow you to have at least a full charge back or half charge back depending on the situation on hand. Now this next section focuses on the armor charges and additional optional mods applied. Charged up times 1 will expand how many charges we can carry, while stacks and stacks makes it easier so each orbs of power collected will be 2. After that, having the Harmonic Siphon, Reaper, and powerful attraction mod will further help with creating orbs at a faster rate and collecting them as well. Lastly, having heavy ammo and special ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods is all you'll need from there onwards. For the weapons, having the Berry Bloodline as well as Sidearm isn't a must for the build, but it does cover a few areas that we can't cover via our fragments. Many people sleep on Bloodline as it's a sidearm, however, it's more than just a basic sidearm to sleep on and with his ability to grant Devour on kills, it will ultimately increase the survival chances in endgame by quite a large margin. The weapon also hits quite hard compared to most sidearms, so its effectiveness is great to use against major enemies that will be a large abundant in the new mode. However, the build is flexible without the exotic on hand, so you do have room to add whatever void weapon or weapon in general you like. Heavy is the Braytech Osprey of Death with Bipod and Autoloading Holster. This is my go-to heavy for dealing with mini bosses and bosses at large. The following is a great pair to use with a Void Soul as it can nuke entire enemies caught within a soul in one blast. At the same time, against bosses, it will have enough reserved ammo on hand to make a large impact and still have plenty of ammo left over. 
So I was originally going to create this setup for Grandmaster Focus activities and just overall make a Bribine build even more tanky than normal. But as Onslaught mode has now arrived, I can be a lot more flexible as to how and where this build will best fit in. In fact, the following build feels more at home with the new mode because of the many areas of lanes where enemies will continuously spawn and attack from. This is what Child of the Old Gods excels at, and more players should make full use of the effect when doing normal to legend mode. So what makes this build special for such a mode? Firstly, a Child of the Old Gods excels with debuffing, stunning and slowly drawing enemies health away the longer it is out. With Briarbind's effect, we can not only pick up our voice soul as we please, but you can also reuse it multiple times over as long as we pick it up before disappearance. This is huge as it will allow us to chuck down multiple voice souls at once as long as we get the energy to do so and since voice souls drain grant glass ability energy slowly or after a kill, it overall means we can do this freely and quite easily over time. And secondly, the build is like an alternative version of Hunter Terror when you do think about it closely. Both grant class ability energy back to the user upon kills and both can lock down key areas with a wide reach. They also both can enhance their subclass effects via given exotic such as Orpheus for Hunters and now Briars for Warlocks. This overall makes its effectiveness skyrocket over time since it's aiding us and our team on a much more wider scale. And lastly, it allows players to combine any void weapon of their choosing to the build and still do great with it. As Child of the Old Gods is quite a basic but quite powerful ability to use, you can use any sort of weapon you see fit. For me, I found that Fairy Bloodline is a great pick because of its damage, its capability of stopping barrier champs, but most importantly its ability to grant the Devourer on selected kills. Our Void Soul will already be granting us a number of benefits to use within the build, but also having Devourer available from weapon makes the kit even more flexible and stronger than normal. It means grenade energy has vastly increased even more and thus allows us to use Vortex grenades fine, but also having health regen that ultimately keeps us alive more. I mean, come on, this build is designed for Legend, Master and GM content galore. As much as most builds have a negative or downside to them, this one oddly doesn't have one except for maybe special ammo running out if you use Berry Bloodline. However, even this is a small issue as long as you have ammo mods to help bolster this area more. It's quite intriguing seeing how many people sleep on Berry Bloodline, even though quite a few prominent YouTubers have broken down this pose quite a lot. Anyways, overall, if you play Void Warlock and you need a build to carry you and your team to wave 5 easily on legend mode, then try this build with a hunter on your side. It's literally game changing. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content to share then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.